In this lesson, we will learn the first two data types in Python, which are integers and floats. So what are integers? Integers are the most basic data type, yet one of the most frequently used, maybe the most frequently used data type is the integer, okay? And we don't need to declare the type of any variable. You might have some knowledge from other programming languages like Java, C, and C++. You would need first to say int x and then assign a value for x. In Python, we don't need to do so. So for example, if we just write x equals 3, and this is the first time we are writing this x, this is the first time we are referring to this x, then Python will create a variable called x, which will have int as its data type. Okay, so if we say x equals 3, we don't really need to have int before x. Okay, Python will infer the data type itself. And we can use a function called type, right? So a function in Python is something that you give an input and it return an output. And we will have complete sections on functions. But for now, consider it as a black box, okay? And this black box takes an input and then returns an output. So the type function takes a variable and it returns the type of this function. So if we run this line, type of x, it will return integer. And we will see this in the code in a moment. The second data type is float. For example, when we write x equal 3.0, Python will create a variable called x, which will have float as its data type. So once we have a floating point in a variable, then Python infer that the data type here is float. So if we just write type of x, it will return float. And performing an arithmetic operation between a float and an integer in Python results in a float automatically. In other programming languages, this can be a problem. So in other programming languages, for example, if we add 3 to 4.7, then you might get 7, okay? So you might need then to convert this 3 to 3.0. So this is float and this is float and you are adding two floats together. So the result will be float. But in Python, you don't really need to worry about this. It will be done automatically. In float also, we can use the scientific notation. So if we say x equal 0.4e7, then this means 0.4 times 10, right? So this means 400,000, okay? And sometimes we use this notation if we have a very large number and we want to represent it in a more compact way. But you need to know also that any number bigger than this number will be treated as infinity because as we said, we are writing Python code, yes, and this Python code is a software, but it's actually converted to hardware, right? It's stored in the hardware. So we cannot have in Python a variable bigger than this number. It will be treated always as infinity. And this problem can happen if, for example, we have a code, and in this code we are multiplying numbers together, and the result getting bigger and bigger until we have a number bigger than this. So this will result that we have nan or infinity. And any number less than this number, which is a very, very small number, will be treated as zero in Python. And this is a common issue called the floating point representation. And in fact, we will go to this web page, which is from Python documentation, okay? We will go to this web page in an upcoming lesson in the next section to understand this problem better because it will be related to one of the operators we are going to discuss. But for now, let's go to the code to understand how we can use integers and float, how to use the type function and so on. So here we are in the Jupyter Notebook. Let's try to create a variable here and let's say that x equal 1. Now, if we print x and print also the another function that we use, we give it a variable and it prints this variable. So x equal 1 and then we print x and we see here that x equal 1. No problem. Now, if we print the output of the type function, Right, so if we print type of x, we will have class int, and we will have complete two sections on this topic on classes and so on. But for now, you need to know that here we are treating it as a data type. Okay, so it says that the data type here is integer, and if we have y equal 1.2, for example, and we printed the type of y, 
we will have float right so this is an integer and this is float so what if we printed the type of x plus y we will have a float also so if we printed x plus y itself we will have 2.2 right so what happened is that python automatically detected that we have a float in our calculation right in, an, in our arithmetic calculation which is 1.2 and we have the other one as one what it did is that it converted this to 1.0 by itself and added the two together and we have the result as a float 2.2 right so it's very very useful to have this in our programming language because in many other programming languages they don't have this thing and it's quite useful to have it in python so this is all you need to know about integers and float in this lesson in the next lesson we will have a discussion about strings and we will understand what do we mean by string